Hello, and welcome to our podcast, Knots of Ariadne. I'm Kira from Out of Ashes Life Coaching, where I help my clients to realize their potential and begin to heal. And I am Marguerite de la Mer. I'm a channel for guys in the angelic realm. I'm also a Reiki master and energy healer. And we are here today to discuss spiritual concepts and answer questions about all things spiritual. We're excited to have you here to discuss all things spiritual and answer your questions. <laughs> you have okay. along your journey and the questions and answer the questions you have along your journey. And today our theme is going to be the awakening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about the awakening, what it means for us, uh, our experiences, and so the first thing I want to say is that the awakening has many definitions um, according to who you talk to. So we want to kind of shed some light on what that process looked like for us. So what did the awakening look like for you, Kira, when you started? Um, so mine, I feel like honestly, was kind of a very slow intro. Like I definitely did not realize what was happening as it was happening and going on. Um, I was actually preparing for the podcast today, trying to think like, when was that moment? Like the, the moment where I'm like, oh my God, I woke. And I don't feel like I actually had that. Mm -hmm. Um, but for most people, when they wake up, when they come into their awakening, it's usually spurred on by like a huge life event that happens to them. So it can be like an accident or something like that. And so for me, I feel like my awakening really kind of started in my divorce. Um, and that's not with everybody. Some people like it, it just like all of a sudden, like one day they're like, oh. but that's not a very common thing. Most people have to go through like a tower moment, like a big thing, um, a moment of chaos. And so, yeah, so for me, that was definitely my divorce where, um, I kind of just came to this realization that I didn't like my job. I didn't like what I was doing. I was very unhappy in my marriage. Things were very rocky and I was tired of trying to fix it. I was trying, tired of trying to um, make it work because we had just been doing it for so long and it felt very one-sided to me. And so, so did you feel like you were at a breaking point in your life then? Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I felt very broken in that time period. And mm -hmm. as I was going through the divorce, I used to tell everybody like, it felt like I had just like, cut off an arm or something. Mm -hmm. Um, but I had to, I think, go through that to be able to realize that there was more. Um, so yeah, so the first part is like that, that, that chaos and craziness. Um, and then you kind of move into like this happy, blissful state. Everything's positive. Everything's <laughs> wonderful. And that's kind of where I feel like a lot of people are like, like we hear them now, they're like, not everything is positive. Not That's everything is great. Yeah. 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 People are like, not everything is wonderful. My life is falling apart. And you know, we go through those stages. And so, but it's kind of that, that point where you're just like, Oh my gosh, like I'm one with the universe and I am the trees and I am the flowers and I'm this. And like, you're so happy. And so like, I just, I picture like a carefree hippie who's just like flowers <laughs> in her hair and stuff. Um, and so I kind of, I feel like for me that wasn't a very long stage. Yeah. I feel like for me, um, I was kind of like wild and carefree and I just wanted to learn about everything. Mm -hmm. And so I was like going and getting books from the library and buying books and downloading audiobooks and like, oh my gosh, this is wonderful. And I just wanted to soak in all the things. So you right? talk about kind of two phases and then a third one. There's kind of a deconstruction, breaking point type of space then maybe a reconstruction and some feelings of bliss and mm -hmm. then wanting to learn everything. Yeah. So Yeah. But I think that kind of goes into the second phase, depending on who you talk to. Mm -hmm. So that's the other thing is like, depending on who you listen to, some will say there's five phases. Some will say there's six phases. Um, the one that resonates with me the most is the six phase one. Although, I mean, I kind of combine a couple of them in there, but I mean, yeah. And the thing is, you don't have to be in just one phase at one time. Mm -hmm. You can be so in one, like a couple of phases. Mm -hmm. You can advance through like your first three, four yeah. phases and then fall back to number two. Like 
you can you can move through it. It's not linear. Not linear. Yeah. Yes, it's not linear. Not linear. Mm -hmm. um, so then you kind of enter into that dark night of the soul. And so what is that? Because people post about it all the time. Yes, we hear all about the shadow work <laughs> lately, and so that's where you're really kind of like, I feel like breaking down your beliefs. Okay. Mm -hmm. And like you're just you're kind of getting to like the raw core of yourself. Would you agree? I would think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're just you're just like, who am I? What do I believe as opposed to what the world has taught me to believe? Kind of an introspection, mm -hmm. a, a shattering of illusions, maybe. Mm -hmm. But also yes. questioning your identity. Questioning yes. And why, why you believe or behave the way you do, I think, too. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the times during this, this is where we're going to confront, like, the ugliness in us. Like, for me, I was very codependent. And so this is the point in where I confronted that codependency. And I started to work through why am I codependent? Why do I feel this way? You know, why do I attract all these narcissists into my <laughs> life and allow them to just screw everything up? You know, why Why am I doing these things? Um, so that's the dark night. And that one, I feel like I was in for quite a while. A while. It took me a long yeah. time to really kind of let go of who I thought I was mm -hmm. and start to define myself by a new identity. And I really like that you're talking about this, the dark night of the soul like this, because it's also a time, wouldn't you say, where we're feeling we can be very triggered and instead of being that angelic, spiritually do-gooder, spiritual do-gooder that we all want to be, we're mm -hmm. actually the complete opposite and we Absolutely. lash out and we're not very graceful with ourselves sometimes, yes. but that's the transformation yeah. process. Um, yeah, we're very not hippy-dippy, everything <laughs> is rainbows. And so then people can start to also call us out and be like, well, wait a minute, you were just saying this and now you're being this way mm -hmm. and that's kind of that that death of our old self um you know because it's very much we have to let our old self kind of die away and be reborn be reborn mm -hmm. and then we move into the void now a lot of like what i'm pulling from is <clears throat> excuse me um a woman on youtube that i follow mm -hmm. she puts a lot of great content up um called the heart alchemist the heart alchemist yeah and so she talks about that we move into a void and that we really need to kind of be in that void and i feel like that's kind of where i'm at right now i'm kind of straddling the void and then the next step grounding right now right. um and so in the void it's really just a time for us to rest mm. and to kind of recharge because we've just gone through this great turmoil where we kind of broke everything down and died to our old self and we were reborn into this new person with like this is who i am now mm -hmm. And so we feel like we're kind of stagnant or stuck and moving forward. And she describes us really as like, we're meant to be able to rest in this time because of what we just went through. And we need to be rested or uh, prepared for where we're going. But no one wants to rest. No, no, we, we feel like we have to keep going <laughs> we have to and keep going. we have to keep doing it. If we don't see progress and, and that's one of the things that I think has to die mm. away. And so that's where you could be kind of straddling your dark night and your void because you are still letting go of some of those old habits that you no longer need no longer moving need. into this new phase moving into this new you know part of your life so would you say that we get purposefully isolated during the void by our guides um, so yeah. that we can rest or? yes they're they're like putting us in a time out we're toddlers at this point and they're like no go to your room <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but then we start to move into grounding. So in, during the void, we start to kind of figure out who we are and what we're meant to do. And so we move into grounding where we're starting to like attain Finally, more knowledge. Grounding. Yeah, so in the void, we're all kind of like up here in the clouds and we're like attaining knowledge and we're learning because we're in this moment of stillness. And so then we have to come back down out of the clouds. We have to ground down. We have to then soak up that knowledge and start to put that knowledge into practice. And so um, that's when we start to kind of be able to help other people mm -hmm. and tell other people or teach other people or share with other people. Um, we start to really kind of soak in what all of that means. And 
that kind of prepares us for the final stage, which Again, we move through these back and forth. So and forth. you because might get up to grounding the and then go back to I dark feel night. Like we're grounding right now. We're sharing. Yes. So. Yes. So that's where I feel like I'm kind of straddling the void and grounding. Where do you think you are? I do think I'm at the grounding phase, actually. Mm -hmm. I do think when you're talking about it, that's where I think I am. Mm -hmm. And I like that you introduced this, this structure that you learned um, because I didn't have that structure in mind, but as you mm -hmm. described it, I realized I did kind of go through the same type of phase. Mm -hmm. And so what are we, what's supposed to happen to us next? In the... So our last step is life purpose. That's where we figure out what we're here to do, what we're meant to be doing. Um, you know, and we start putting that into practice. So like for me, I know my life purpose has something to do with helping others heal and guiding others. Um, so moving into my life coaching practice this year, I feel like was kind of me starting to move towards my life purpose but at the same time I'm still feeling like there's roadblocks and barriers and such so there's still like some stuff holding me back which is why mm -hmm. I still feel like I'm kind of in that void um, they're still like whoa wait a minute but yes life purpose and you can start to do your life purpose and then potentially your life purpose changes and you kind of go back to figure out ground down okay what am I meant to do what or go back to, to that do? void mm -hmm. where they're like okay you've achieved this we're gonna we're gonna send you on another path now you know so that's where I said we, we can move back and so your life's purpose ne isn't necessarily gonna be for a lifetime static. yes so in the life purpose I feel it's a whole other podcast but I do have a few questions about that uh, for you um, well first I think we have several contracts and several life purposes that kind of goes into what you're saying about it changing throughout your life mm -hmm. but I think one of the things that the listeners might wonder if they're at the beginning of their awakening is what is my life purpose and why can't I know it now so why don't we know it right away why is it delayed like that are we not ready to receive it are we supposed to go through a learning before we know it I mean in my opinion, I think if we were to know our life purpose right away when we were in like that step one, step two, mm -hmm. that's like giving a teenager the keys to a Rolls Royce. <laughs> like, you know, here's here's the car, you know, baby. yeah, like that you don't know where you're going, you don't know what yeah. you're doing, like, and mm -hmm. you may potentially cause more harm than good. Cause more harm than because good. Because you haven't gone through that learning process yet. So you would maybe try to go share and heal people when you're not ready. You're not mm -hmm. ready to do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You may actually do more harm to them that, than that good. That makes complete sense because mm -hmm. I know that I was very impatient when my awakening happened. And it was a lot of, why is this happening? I need to do something with it. I need to find out. And I wanted to get going right away. Mm -hmm. um, but I had to be patient. My life purpose has and been revealed in pieces. What spurred on your awakening? So my awakening, um, oh, you know, um, I'm going to, there's a lot of people who say this, that they've had skills their whole life and they, the awakening made them aware of them and accelerated them. And I kind of feel like I was one of those people. Mm -hmm. I had certain skills my whole life that I didn't really completely pay attention to or acknowledge. And my awakening all of a sudden happened when I was married and I went to get my first Reiki session. I don't even know why. I actually went to people who were um, practicing. They were volunteering after having received uh, training and they needed people to practice on. And I was very weirded out because I did grow up in a strict religious household. Yeah. And so I didn't know what this was, uh, but I thought, you know what? I came here for a reason. I'm going to do the Reiki. And she did Reiki on me. She said some things that were very relevant to my life because she also had some mediumship and she told me something when I was done she said you might cry as you leave the room and I was yeah right I'm not gonna cry <laughs> this is you know and mm -hmm. I was bawling I was bawling <laughs> the moment I left the room and I didn't know what happened to be honest my awakening just hit me in the face because I had no idea what was happening but I went home and it's like I didn't have the big picture but I, always, but I knew the next step, and when I went home, I did know that I needed to leave my situation. And I knew that there was something that was calling me, and I remember sitting out and watching the moon that week, watching the full moon, 
and just sitting there and staring at it and being like, I know there's something calling me. I know I'm supposed to do something. I just don't know what. <laughs> and that was the very beginning. But because I was so, I felt like such a weight had been lifted uh, from me when I went through, uh, when I, that Reiki was performed on me. And I gained such clarity as to what my next step should, should be. And a, an awareness of my deep emotions, which was I was unhappy at the time. Mm -hmm. I was unhappy. There were things that weren't going right for me. And I wasn't acknowledging that. And the Reiki helped me completely acknowledge that and release it. Mm -hmm. So then I, the first thing was I wanted to learn Reiki. I was like, I need to know what this is. Yeah. My whole life I've been spiritual because mm -hmm. I've been reading the Bible. But I never learned this. Yeah. And I need to know what this is because it is so powerful. Um, and one so, thing I didn't yeah. touch on is that step two, that like positive thing. That's when we start to receive our gifts. Receive the gifts. So you are probably moving into that second stage. Oh. With learning the Reiki and becoming attuned mm -hmm. because you were starting to receive and open up to that gift that you had. That makes complete sense. Mm -hmm. um, and so with the Reiki, a bunch of other things came because I did go, I did, it was not linear for me, linear for me at all. No. I did go, you know, in the void where I was trying to learn everything, the pendulum, the cards, um, herbs, crystals, you mm -hmm. name it. I would stay up till 3 a.m. listening to podcasts about aliens. <laughs> I was like, I'm going crazy. And so, but then um, I moved into where I'm here, where I can be my true Virgo self, Virgo self, and start <laughs> truly grounding. And actually, Kira is the person who really helped me start grounding with her coaching. Um, so I'm very grateful for that. But yes, it brought upon a lot of changes. I did go through the phases you described. Mm -hmm. um, and we still go through, I think, our whole lives, no matter how advanced, awakened we are, we still have mm -hmm. the opportunity to revisit our shadows yeah. at different times. Yeah, so. absolutely. Well, and I mean, right now we're in a Mercury retrograde as we're filming mm -hmm. this. And so that, I mean, that kind of just goes back to that. Like, we are constantly tested. Like when we think that we've met it, then it's like, okay, now you're going to go to that next advanced level next of testing level. Mm -hmm. and we're going to revisit it and it's going to come back to us. And we're going to, um, you know, just when we think we've got it and then they're like, Oh, okay. Level two. And so we do bounce around we quite do. a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, what would you say are some of, oh, sorry, were you finished with no, your no, go awakening ahead. story? Go ahead. I, you didn't really get to your, your I, yeah. well, you just say you're kind of in the void and the grounding right I'm now. I'm in the void and grounding. I have a general idea of my life's purpose. Mm -hmm. It's being revealed to me in pieces. Yeah. Um, I am impatient and I wanted to know it right away, but as we all are. <laughs> <laughs> it's in their timing, not ours. <laughs> Um, so then I guess my next question is, what would you say are some of the benefits to going through an awakening? Well, the benef the obvious ones that everyone is fascinated by is the spiritual skills that you develop or acquire. Mm -hmm. But I would say I actually became aware of ones that, are, that I already had mm -hmm. and grew them. And I think a lot yeah. of people kind of have them. Um, like if someone was clairaudient, all of a sudden they acknowledge it and it expands. For mm -hmm. me, it was the claircognizance and the divine connection that has always been very strong. Mm -hmm. um, so that, I acknowledged that, became completely aware of it, um, but also the, the ability to sense energies. So I'd say that's, that's of course, everybody's fascinated by that. Why, how, why mm -hmm. wouldn't you be? Yeah. Um, so then it's, you learn to master your skills and to use them for good and to direct your life in a positive uh, direction. Um, we talk about manifesting part of awakening is learning to manifest the life that you want. So that's a great thing. Mm -hmm. Those are all super positive things. And that's usually what people advertise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and see, and that's where I was thinking, like definitely the manifesting, like mm -hmm. the awakening, learning how I'm manifesting my future, whether it po be positive or negative. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like that definitely was a huge benefit to realize that, I was putting my energy over here before and I don't have to do that. I can yes. shift it over to this side. And then also just the learning how to be more authentically myself. And I guess learning how to have my voice, I think was another huge benefit of my awakening. Um, because instead of me 
trying to help everybody else and give everybody else my energy, mm -hmm. I now was like given permission to take some of my energy back. I feel like was what came out of my awakening. That's a great thing. Oh yeah, and that is a very um, strong point because there are many people who go through the awakening, myself included, where you are setting boundaries. You you learn to set boundaries is I think a big part of it, and you learn to take your power back. And I think that's a huge benefit as well. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes when you're going through it, you see it as a negative because you get isolated. Um, and you cut off certain relationships or limit them or redefine them. Um, so it can be very trying, but having the boundaries makes you more powerful, um, yes. protects you. So, so yeah, so some of the negative things of awakening is that you do have to cut off some of those relationships like true. you were talking about. Yes. What are some other negative <laughs> effects of awakening that you can think of? Oh, uh, well, the dark night of the soul, because you're, you're lashing out. I feel like your triggers just come up. All your triggers just bubble yeah. up, and that's not a good feeling at all. Um, so, and I would say the negatives are also uh, the crisis of identity yes. that you go through, and it, that's before you, you have to peel away all the layers of who you're not to realize who you are, mm -hmm. and sometimes you don't really know what's left. You feel like there's nothing left. Um, I remember thinking, you know, what have I been believing this whole time? What, and especially if you had a religious background, you built certain beliefs, like um, that you are here to do good deeds so that you can go to heaven. So that's something that could get deconstructed during this process. And the temptation is to replace it with another belief, but you really want to dwell in the void for a while. You really want to dwell in, yeah. and that is very difficult. It is it's very, very difficult. Hard. It's like walking in the <laughs> desert. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. And I feel like when, when I'm in the void, sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, like, why do I have to know these things? Why do I, why have, do I have, to have to receive answer? this information? Yes. Well, I mean, just because I'm like, sometimes it is so overwhelming, mm -hmm. I feel like, to... Um, to know that there's more or to know like to see more and to feel more than what other people around you are seeing and feeling yes and yeah. to have that background knowledge that they don't understand mm -hmm. and then you can't like you can't you do can't the work for them it and you can't open you can't, their eyes yeah you can't them. undo it and you can't open their eyes for them exactly yeah. exactly and that can be very frustrating too like i can think of so many days where i'm just sitting there in my car usually cuz that's where I get a lot of my alone time or my downloads or any of that. And I'm just like, why? Why do I need to know this? Like, can't I just go back to when I was oblivious <laughs> and things seemed easy? You want to be oblivious. <laughs> but at the same time, like, it's not good to be oblivious. <laughs> like, there's so many things going on. So it's not, I think the, the one you're bringing up is being able to relate to people, being people being able to relate to us. Mm -hmm. And I think that I eventually came to a point of acceptance where I can still have loving relationships with people who are not sensing, seeing the same things I'm seeing. Um, I just need to accept where they're mm -hmm. at. And um, that's just how it is. But that is a difficult thing because mm -hmm. you want everyone to see what you're seeing. You want to share it. You want to talk about the possibility of the universe being much bigger than what we've described yeah. so far in our beliefs. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't really have any other questions. Is there anything that you want to share that we didn't cover? I think we've covered a lot of it. Yeah. So um, one thing that we want to do or that we uh, are going to do with you here at um, our, on our podcast, on our channel, is one is the tool of the day. So today I want to share with you the tool of the day is affirmations that I want to share with you. And I love affirmations. I do these every day, kind of depending on where I want to go with my life in that in general that day. Like I might do them for business, for entrepreneurship, for love, mm -hmm. for money. I mean, all you can find all kinds of podcasts on YouTube um, or affirmation videos on YouTube. And I just find them great for 
kind of retuning my mind and getting me back up to that higher vibration, that higher frequency where maybe my thoughts have not been so great lately. Maybe they've been kind of um, down in the dumps and mm -hmm. just manifesting not what I want to manifest, you know, like poor me, woe is me. And I find affirmations are wonderful for bringing me up out of that. You they know? are incredible. And um, as you learn in your awakening, everything has a frequency and words have a frequency and a vibration. So when you're saying the words, you're transforming yourself and your beliefs in your future. And um, the longer and the more regularly you can hold that frequency, mm -hmm. you know, the more likely you are to get there. So yeah, the quicker you yes. bring in that vibration or that thing. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I think what's difficult with affirmations is saying them when when you're not feeling like you're there. So mm -hmm. when you're not feeling loved saying I am loved and I am loved mm. you're saying the opposite of how you actually feel and because you're trying to transform your situation yes and you're trying to acknowledge that nothing can take away nothing can really take away the value of who you are none of your mm. circumstances can do that and you can transform that through the affirmations um, mm. I love affirmations I love them too yeah mm -hmm. and you want to talk about a, a special person of the day for each podcast so who yeah. are talk about today yes today we're going to talk about Archangel Gabriel the Archangel of communication his or her colors are blue and white and gold and I often see him with a trumpet um, he is known as the strength of God he or she is known as the strength of God and appeared to the Virgin Mary announced the birth of John the Baptist and Jesus in the um, in the traditional stories of the Bible but my work with Archangel Gabriel has really been in communication in the throat chakra. And we'll, we'll talk about the chakras later. And it's what, um, it holds the key to your authentic self, being your authentic self, speaking your truth, communicating. And Archangel Gabriel is here to help with everything related to that. And because of him traditionally also announcing births, he's also there to facilitate childbirth and conception. So he's a great yeah. archangel to call upon for those kind of things. And um, and here I just use him to help me communicate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, anytime I'm going into like my coaching appointments or anything like that, or I'm going to be doing readings for people with my cards, I always call on Archangel Gabriel to just help me to speak clearly in a way that they will understand mm -hmm. um, and to deliver the message through me that they need to hear. Um, so he's a wonderful one to call on for that, I wonderful feel like. Person to call for that. Yes. <laughs> yes, and I wore blue on my shirt today, so that worked oh, out great. Right. Cool. So we're good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. We're in sync. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, I think that's all we had to talk with our listeners tonight. So yeah. we're going to bid you good night. And we hope you enjoyed our first podcast today and that you will come back um, and listen to us again. And if you have any questions, feel free to share them on our channel or our Instagram. Write to us, inbox us, mm -hmm. uh, Marguerite de la Mer and Out of Ashes, Out of Ashes LC mm -hmm. on Insta. I'm also on Facebook. Are you on Facebook? On Facebook as well, yes. Yes, yes. All Thank right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>